Meyer Lamb, pastor of Wayside United Methodist Church in Vienna, West Virginia, and pastor of Sand Hill United Methodist Church in Boaz, West Virginia. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our gospel lesson is from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately, aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it, but the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her in Aramaic, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately, the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You've probably heard the saying, desperate times call for desperate measures. Desperate times are those when the odds are not in our favor, when we are filled with despair, anguish, and distress, when we are barely hanging on to a thread of hope, or even when we feel completely without hope. Many of 
of us have been through or some of us are even going through desperate times. Some have been going through, are going through difficult times with finances. How will we pay for food and a roof over our heads? How will we pay all the bills that, that keep coming in when there are more bills than money? Will we pay for medicine or food or the electric bill? Some have lived through the battle with substance abuse disorder and addiction, whether the struggle was their own or they felt helpless while someone they loved struggled. Some are still going through the battle. Some have been through are going through a battle for health and life after a diagnosis. Dementia, Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes, lupus, kidney disease, heart disease, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Crohn's, or some other condition. Some have been through, are going through difficult battles for health and life, searching for a diagnosis and treatment after experiencing ongoing pain or illness. When we read through the Gospels, many times we encounter good religious people like the Pharisees. We encounter religious officials like the scribes, people who did not approve of Jesus, of his teaching and healing activity. There were some who saw Jesus as a danger and a threat to the Jewish faith and people. But we must remember that Jesus himself, he was Jewish. All his disciples and early followers were Jewish as well. There were some who were resistant to Jesus, to his message and his ministry. But there were also others who were attracted to the same message and ministry, like Jairus. Jairus was a leader of the synagogue, and he was a desperate man. He was desperate for healing for his daughter. Wherever Jesus went on the western side of the Sea of Galilee, the, the Jewish side, a crowd was sure to gather around him, seeking healing and help. A great crowd was gathered around Jesus once again, and Jairus saw him out, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly to heal his daughter, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Jairus' need was great, as was his faith. And Jesus went with him. As Jairus and Jesus made their way to the home where the girl was awaiting healing, they were followed by a large crowd. And the large crowd was pressing in on them. In the crowd, there was a woman. A woman who was desperate for healing. She had been ill for as long as Jairus' daughter had been alive. Twelve years. The woman suffered from an illness that caused heavy, ongoing bleeding for 12 years. She suffered not just from the illness itself, but from the medical treatment. Mark tells us she had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. 
there was another layer to the woman's suffering. Not only was she in pain, weakened, and impoverished by her condition, but also because of her condition, she was an outcast from family, society, and her faith community. Mark doesn't go into all the details, but his original audience would have instantly known that the woman's bleeding disorder made her unclean according to the law. She would not have been able to go to the synagogue to worship or to the temple to pray and make offerings to God. She would not have been able to have lived with her family or even to go shopping in the market because whoever touched her or her clothing or any item that she touched would be for a time unclean and unable to participate in the community of faith. The woman was cut off, cut off from family, from society, cut off from living out her faith. Many of us have known a small, a very small fraction of what she went through and must have felt. In the last year with COVID restrictions, many of us have felt cut off from family, society, and our communities of faith. It has been a source of psychological and spiritual trauma for many. We've all hoped and responded differently. Some of us have followed the guidelines to the best of our abilities and Others of us have struggled. However we have responded, I think that we can all agree that we desperately yearn for a return to normal, to some kind of normal, don't we? It feels like it has been an insufferably long time that we've been dealing with this pandemic. 15 months is a long time. Think about how you felt, how you still feel. And now imagine the woman in our gospel lesson with no option but to live socially distant. She was cut off from others for 12 years. The woman was desperate for healing. So desperate that she risked going out into the crowd where she was not permitted. Surely she would have faced shame and punishment if people had found out who she was and the nature of the illness that she had. She had heard about Jesus. Wherever he went, demons were cast out, and those who were sick were made well. They were healed. She didn't presume to talk to him. She didn't ask him for his time or his attention. She believed that if she could just touch his cloak, she would be healed. And no one would even have to know what she had done, right? She reached out and touched Jesus' clothing, and she was immediately made well. Although she didn't seek attention, attention from Jesus, he was very much aware of her presence. When she touched him, he felt his healing power being poured out. 
So he asked, who touched me? His disciples thought it was a ridiculous question because there were so many people surrounding him and pressing in on him. But the woman came forward. She'd been found out. She was trembling in fear and she fell down at his feet. She confessed her need and what she had done. She was basically confessing that by touching him, she had made him unclean. But Jesus didn't scold her or even acknowledge that according to the law, what she had done, it was very wrong. Jesus said, daughter, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Be made well. Be restored. Be made whole. Jesus was still on his way to Jairus' house to help his daughter when the news reached them that she had died. Those who delivered the message told Jairus that there was no point in continuing to bother Jesus. It was a lost cause. But Jesus heard what they said and reassured Jairus, telling him to not lose hope, but to continue believing. When they reached the house, Jesus left the crowds outside, taking Peter, James, and John with him. They walked past the people who were weeping and wailing loudly in grief, and Jesus told them, not to cry, that there was still hope. They laughed at that idea. Jesus then took the girl's parents into where she was. And he took the little girl by the hand and said, little girl, get up. And she immediately got up and began walking around. When Jesus began his ministry, he proclaimed, The kingdom of God has come near. The kingdom of God is at hand. His miracles, like, the he like healing the woman who was ill for 12 years and raising the 12-year-old girl from death to life, they were signs of the inbreaking reign and rule of God. Jesus again and again and again met people's need for help and hope and healing. He still meets our need for help and hope and healing. But many of us are painfully aware that the healing that we desire and pray for, for ourselves and others, it doesn't always happen the way we want. Sometimes the miracle that we want and, they, and we need, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. During his earthly ministry, Jesus healed many. But he didn't eliminate all disease. He calmed storms, but he didn't make all storms cease. He raised Jairus' daughter and his friend Lazarus from death to life. But he didn't banish all death. What does this mean for us? We believe that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. He is with us in difficult times, times of grief and sickness and despair. There is hope and healing and help in Jesus. But it doesn't always 
look like what we want it to look like. We pray for our needs and for the needs of others. In faith, we pray that our, our prayers are heard and they will be answered. We pray, thy kingdom come. And we are to live as kingdom people. Too often we pray for God's kingdom to come, but we don't really act anything like our King, Jesus. Who are we as the church? We are the body of Christ in the world. Imagine the healing that would take place in our relationships, in our churches, in our communities, in our world, if we were more like our Lord Jesus. Imagine the healing that would take place if we were less concerned with who's in and who's out, seeing everyone as someone of sacred worth, created in the image of God, deeply loved by and valued by God. Imagine if we were less concerned about being right or winning or making a name or a reputation for ourselves and sought above all to glorify God. Imagine if we were less concerned with the letter of the law and more focused on living out the law of love, loving God and neighbor. Imagine the healing that would take place if we were less focused on ourselves and our own wants and our own needs and our own preferences and more focused on seeing and meeting the needs out there in our communities. Yes, Jesus loves us. Yes, Jesus is with us. Yes, there is hope and healing and help in Jesus. And he invites us to be his kingdom people who take that hope and help and healing out into a hurting, broken world. May we enthusiastically say yes to that invitation. May we indeed be more like our King Jesus. May it indeed be so. And now receive these words of blessing. Go now in peace. May you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen.